Welcome back. I'm Barry Craig. Perhaps the biggest scandal to ever rock college football is the ongoing scandal at Penn State University involving assistant coach Jerry Sandusky. With me today to discuss this uh, are two good friends of mine. Leon Worth, who is a scout for the Milwaukee Brewers, and Joy Fosco, who writes for the Paducah Sun. Welcome to the program. Good to Thank see you again, Barry. Now, I guess we should preface this by saying as fast moving as this thing is going, by the time this program is broadcast, uh, it may have completely changed. I mean, it's only going to get uglier. And it's only, absolutely. Um, since Joey is, is the media representative here, why don't you give us just a general historical chronology of what this scandal is up to this point? Well, we're talking, you know, I'm 44 years old. Penn State is one of the iconic college football programs in the country. A program that's never been investigated by the NCAA, has always won. Squeaky clean. Joe Paterno is the right. winningest coach in right. college football. You know, it, he, Penn, Joe Paterno and Penn State have always been just iconic figures in college football. And here's, you know, this was a college that was known as Linebacker U for a great deal of time in this span because they were producing great linebackers. Like, Jack Lambert, Jack Ham, I think with Old Penn Aaron State. Aaron another one. Uh, so there's yeah. a long oh, yeah. line of them. Yeah. Jerry Sandusky was the defense coordinator for much of this time, and he was kind of considered the architect of that. And I don't remember the year exactly. About a decade ago, he just all of a sudden picks up and resigns. And at the time, people, I think, were wondering, well, you know, it's kind of a strange timing and everything. And it's only come out now years later that he is suspected of being involved in molesting uh, boys that he dealt with through his charity, uh, kids he, he dealt with troubled kids, and, uh, I guess football camps, that kind of thing, and it's threatened to tear down the entire Penn State football program because apparently a couple, another assistant coach may have walked in on something and saw it, and there's some suspicion that Joe Paterno, the head coach who's a legendary figure in college football, may have not pursued this as much as he should have, and May they might have swept this under the rug because Jerry Sandusky was such an important part of the program. He's no longer in the program, but he still had privileges at Penn State. He still had access to the football offices. He was still allowed on campus, and all this has come out. This has been an investigation in the works for several years. The Harrisburg, Pennsylvania newspaper has been working on this for years, trying to uncover this stuff, and it just only recently exploded. And right now, I mean, it's already cost Joe Paterno his job. And his, guys and his reputation. College, yeah, and his reputation. It's threatening to really, it's, it's damaged Penn State's credibility, not just the football program, but the entire university. Sure. I mean, this is, I mean, the Penn State president lost his job over this. And it's, it's reaching to the very highest levels of that. You know, and this is one of the America's great universities. Mm -hmm. It's considered one of the best public universities in the country mm -hmm. with a football program that was considered one of impeccable character. Mm -hmm. And this is undermined, this has really sold well, all of that. I, I go back. Uh, Paterno was this this paragon of what a coach should be like. If you were a, a, a parent and had a kid who wanted to play college football, you'd wanted to play for Joe Paterno. He was in <laughs> Guidepost magazine. This 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 great guy. Uh, their graduation rate was was very high. Uh, a lot of college coaches, as you know, all they care about is getting four years out of a guy, and they don't care if he graduates or not. Paterno was very in tune with academics. Uh, met with their professors, and and this is got to be the greatest shock um, and when your reaction to it I mean you're a, a, a baseball man but you're a football and basketball fan well I, mean, I was uh, I was a college coach right so I so it, it's obviously of interest um, I think what you know when did uh, you know it's the old thing when did he when did Joe know and when did he know it I don't think there's going to be much question about what went on I think the culpability of paternal now is in is the whole thing mm -hmm. and 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 my only thing I can add to it I would say you know um, Happy Valley is not a very big place um, it's unhappy valley now and it's very unhappy and you know Barry Switzer came out and, and I'd, I'd have to agree with Barry I don't know how that everybody up there doesn't know. I mean, you know, at Murray State, and I, it's, uh, Penn State's a little bigger, but the size of the town, I think, similar, and, and you know, so it. State College is not a big city no, place. No, and you, 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 a guy like Paterno, that guy, he's got to have known 
how many towels are in the locker room. I mean, this guy is well, such a Well, I'm going to say this. College football head coaches are more like CEOs. Well, that is true. They're are, coordinators. That's true. Face, That's true. Joe Paterno's not really been coaching for a long time. Right. He's the overseer. Of, right. He's the CEO of the program. Yeah. But, I, you know, the problem is, is when this was whatever was, we don't know for sure what Joe Paterno was told happened. It, that's still, the details are still murky about that. Yeah. But it seems pretty evident that, that, that there was a reluctance on the part of the program to really pursue this to the very end because they were afraid it was going to maybe a pub, become a public issue and become mm -hmm. a black eye of the program. There seems to have been kind of a protective mode that they sort of took a protective mode instead of, hey, let's, let's get this out in the open and get it dealt with. One of the things, too, that, that I have found interesting of late is uh, now l the outline of this, and correct me if I'm wrong, this grad assistant at the time is Ms. McQuarrie, who is a, just a coach of Penn State yeah. now. He, uh, he told the grand jury that he came into the locker room and saw Sandusky uh, sodomizing a 10-year-old boy. Uh, he then went out and called his father McQuarrie, oh, sorry, he's a GA grad assistant. Grad assistant at the probably time. Probably 23 years right, old. Right, right, Not a pretty young guy who's probably scared of what he right, was right. scared of the knowledge. So, he so then he acquired. goes, he calls his father, and then after that, he calls the coach. Well, in the last few days, he sent an email out where he, ele where he now says he talked to the police. But there's no record of it. And there's no record of that, and the police deny that. Now, what do you make of that? That's a, uh, I mean, he's, th he's it's almost to cover. like he, he's perjured himself. In his well, he, he's testimony. trying to cover himself. And, you know, I, 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 I say this, I was 23 years old once. If I'm 23 years old and I'm in Penn State's football program, here's Jerry Sandusky and Joe Paterno, I'm a little scared, too, of what happens. You know, and, and I'm not saying, you know, at 23 years old, your judgment is not necessarily always the best. And. He's, he's intimidated by these guys. He, these are his bosses. And anybody that works for a living, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't know what to do when it comes, when it involves your superiors and people you look up to and allies. I, we don't know all the details yet. So I, I don't want to hang him yet for what we don't know. But, but obviously, there seems to be a decision made somewhere along the, along the, in the power structure of that program is, hey, we're going to sweep this under the rug and, and not, we don't want to. We don't want this to come out. We're going to try to hide it. We're just going to try to smooth it over, and make everything go away. Mm -hmm. Well, my take in the grad assistant. I, you know, I, I give him a pass till we know. At, le at least he did report to some people and to Paterno, supposedly, right? Yeah. He did tell Paterno. Yep. It's the higher ups is where the ball so, should stop rolling. So my question is, if this was a shock to Joe Pa at the time. Was it 2002 when this was? Somewhere uh, late 90s. I think but, and there are reports. Was it 98? Uh, well, 98, 98 in any 99. event, whenever it was, right. Well, so the timeline is important in, the, in this manner. I believe at the time that he, was he uh, on the staff? Because the timeline, was he? Yeah, yeah he was still the defense coordinator at the time, I believe. So I think that, I think he's been retired for 15 years. But anyway. Oh, yeah, he was still on the staff. I'm thinking, did he retire, in, was it oh five? Four I've, I, I don't know the timeline yeah. exactly. But he but was still an assistant coach yeah, when but, this happened. But right. there came a time afterwards that the, he believe, quietly resigned. Yeah, I believe he's 67 and retired at 55, so that's 12 years ago. Right. But he got away from the – But, so he, but if even, this was 2002, it would have been after. But anyway. Now, I think 99 is where it comes to my mind. Okay. Yeah, and that's 12 late, years ago. Late 90s, right. But what's happened is even though he left the program in an official capacity, he has his charity he's been running for years, working with troubled kids. He has still had access to Penn State's campus to do this stuff, mm -hmm. and he's done stuff at Penn State. Has some branch campuses around the state. He's done some stuff. There's now some talk that maybe some stuff happened at some of these branch campuses that he worked at. This thing, this thing just keeps expanding. It expanding does. All the time. And, and I think the troubling part, and, and he's right about uh, the head football coach being the CEO. I mean, you know, he doesn't get involved with a lot of this stuff, but still, he was made aware. And the first question that pops to my mind is. If this was totally new to Paterno, just like you're kidding, I either don't believe the GA, who evidently stayed there, and he did, but the thing is that incidents happened after. So, you know, it, it still wouldn't have been right if he had went to Sandusky or whatever and said, cease, desist, or you're gone. And if it did, but there's incidents reported afterwards. So then it makes you, and again, we don't know. We don't know what happened. 
but the culpability of Paterno with all this under his watch, with like he said, he, okay, he retired, but he was still, had the keys, he still got in, he still did all the things, still mm -hmm. had all the privileges. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I would like to know from my standpoint, I think a lot of other people, I mean, you're still the overseer of this, and when you're talking about something of this, you know, I, I mean, what else can you compare it to? I don't know what else could bring Penn State down more except, oh, Joe was running a terrorist camp to right, uh, right. You know, that's I about mean, it. Sure. that's about it. That's the only yeah. thing you say. Yeah. He was recruiting terrorists. I mean, what, how, how much worse can it be? Right. So Go back a few months ago, all this stuff that came in Miami's program, all the the this one guy that's in jail now for whatever it it was a booster, and he was funneling money to players and buying them all kinds of crazy stuff. Those are NCAA rules right. violations. I don't know. There might have been some laws broken there, but it's pretty much financial type stuff. This is serious. Well, it's, it's, it's a, it's this is criminal, criminal activity involving activity. minors. Absolutely. And uh, this is, uh, I, ca I can't imagine it getting any uglier than what this is. I can't either. The, uh, the one thing that you hear a little bit about that's, that uh, may not be related, but the district attorney that disappeared in 2005 that's to me. That's also fascinating. It's just totally fascinating to me. Now, I, I love, uh, you know, NCIS, CSI, right, like everybody sure, else. Sure, so, yeah. And yeah. the and hard drive may, washes up in the... And the hard drive washes up. Now, mm. to me, you, you go, yeah. okay, uh, you know, conspiracy theory, whatever. And all the, and like you said, the police, everybody, this guy, you talk about disappearing without a trace. Uh, everything they investigated was, uh, he was, his daughter was 27 at the time and they were close. Uh, the galley was dating at the time. There was no issues, no nothing. They couldn't find any, you know, association with any mob group, any type activity. This guy was a hard, and a hard nosed guy, a hard nosed district attorney. He was attorney. a month from retiring or something? Yeah, I think a month mm -hmm. from retiring. He had absolutely nothing, and they can't, they, nothing. I know. And to me, that's like, now, it, it, it may have nothing to do with this, but you, now, like Joey said, I mean, geez, you talk about if it does, now we're talking. Oh, that's the just, yeah, it's you know, I, I, don't, I mean, that's, I mean, that's conspiracy theory type stuff. Oh, sure. But, sure. But sure. It, and it's just, sure. it's really, it's just, it's just one aspect of this investigation, but, but it's really interesting because, what in the, you know, yeah. is this related at all? Yeah, and it if could it be is totally, somehow, it, it's it could crazy. Be, it, it may could, not be. But it, it may not be. It could be totally the hand. greatest coincidence. At, at this could point, be you, you, you have to be suspicious about it. And um, this is like candy assassination type oh, stuff. It, it, it's just, <laughs> it's just uh, 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 another thing, too, of course, I'm, I know you all saw the, the Bob Costas interview with Sandusky, and uh, what's interesting is uh, I watched the, the fallout from that and all these lawyers thought, what was his lawyer doing allowing him to do that, that he just dug himself in deeper and deeper? That was crazy. And one lawyer said, all this is gonna do is make other people now step forward, and it, that's happening. Uh, you heard, what, what, did you, what was your reaction to, to Sandusky in that? In that the whole time, I didn't watch it live, I watched it on tape later, and the whole time I'm thinking the same thing is, why in the world is he doing this? And, 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 and Bob Costas, who I have immense respect oh, for, yeah. and is a tremendous interviewer, and Bob Costas did a wonderful job with this, but the whole time I'm thinking, what is Sandusky thinking? Does he really think anything good's gonna come out of this? Yeah. And I'm, uh, and I'm I, you know, and he, I mean, he's, he, this is his, this is him on the line in this situation. He's got, he needs to do what he, it's best for him, his life and what, his family and whatever. What possible good came out of doing this interview? I mean, he did fry himself. He did. He turned the heat up on himself a little he bit did. with this interview. He and did. He did. I, it's I, crazy. And, and listening to some radio, they had a, uh, somebody who had worked uh, in stuff like this uh, with the Catholic Church. And they said that it followed uh, his interview, they go, just follow the line of um, uh, of not thinking that it was all that wrong and that, it, no, it was just horseplay. And so I've, and I've heard several, I've heard two different ones on the radio. I forget the shows. But You're they- are saying this, this, this is like, it's kind of like the stuff that priests were saying when yeah. they were being interviewed like this? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was, it was like a kind of a denial, kind of, oh, it was just, um, you know, and I, I think the, uh, the big question that they kept playing back was if, if uh, you know somebody asks you, are you sexually attracted 
and he repeated the question he did. back and he they did. and and all the people that deal with this go that is the number one it is. thing that a lawyer and stuff and they get when you're you know it's like a guilt all over it is if they it's say okay i'm he's making He's, when you repeat the question and say, okay, I got to think of the answer, well, that's the only, and that's mm -hmm. what lawyers that's, are. That's exactly if I get asked right. that question, my answer is not just no, it's hell no. Hell no, exactly. And that's, uh. and that's what everybody said. They said, yeah. you don't think, you go, hell no. Right. So he really yeah. did. He, he just, yeah. and, and you just get this, uh, you know, people say, oh, I want to just get this creepy feeling. And, and you, but knowing what you know, you try, you know, so you try to watch without, okay, let's try to make it fair and whatever, mm -hmm. but still it's mm -hmm. uh, one interesting aspect, Jack McCallum writes for Sports, Il Sports Illustrated, been covering college football forever. He, he blogged a couple, about a week ago after this came out. He did a short feature on Sandusky and this charity back in the 90s. He I said, saw that. He was covering a Penn State, they were 9-0 in the national title hunt and they got beat by Minnesota. And so his Penn State story pretty much is out the window. And he tells his editor, well, this defense, Jerry Sandusky, this great assistant coach is involved in this charity, I think I'll do something on it. And McCallum wrote that he, he said he doesn't really remember all the details now. He said, I'll read the story now. It looks like I kind of just mailed it in. I did it real quick. But he said, my impression of talking to Jerry Sandusky was I didn't really like the guy that much. And he didn't seem all that really just, you know, enthusiastic about this charity and what he was doing. And he said, looking back now, obviously you have a totally different th opinion about it now. He says, but, you know, he said, we, that's, that's, this is unthinkable, the kind of stuff that's come out now. You never would have ever imagined mm -hmm. this in your worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, like I said, the, the, the entire image of Penn State's football program from the top down, from Joe Paterno all the way down, is irreparably harmed. That's why he is no longer coaching that program because they've got a they've got a long battle on their hands just to try to, re well, he's try got to a rehab lawyer. their image. Paterno got a criminal attorney. To represent him, uh, I can't blame him. Oh, no, sure. I, I, and that 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 makes you think, uh huh. Uh, well, he knows he's going to be a target, probably. Now. Oh, absolutely. Well, see, Mike, I, I was wondering if, uh, in the process as this goes forward, if <clears throat> perhaps a prosecutor might cut some kind of a deal with Sandusky if he will implicate others. Uh, I'm not saying they will let him off, uh, not at all. But what I'm saying is. Um, because they want to, I think if I were a prosecutor, I'd want to fry as many fish as I could. Well, he will be the primary target. Yeah. But I, in the aftermath of when his case is resolved, this could spread. Oh, I think to it will. a lot of other people, uh, and it, it probably more so in the civil court system, exactly. than the criminal court it, system. Exactly. And, I, and that's probably why Paterno th has this, this lawyer. This will be something that haunts Penn State for, for years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it will. They, um, it, they will. This will not go away anytime soon. Along those lines, um, I did see some proposals made by various people that Penn State cancel the rest of their football season. You, your thoughts on that? Well, you, I, I can see where people uh, would say that, and it's you know I don't know the kids that um, it's not fair to the players. The, the players. Mm -hmm. they, you know, these guys have nothing to do with this situation. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand what they're saying. I mean, well, they were saying it, it, it was as a symbol to show this was the beginning of some kind of serious atonement over this. But on the other hand, I see, I see your point that these kids who are playing ball now totally nothing. Yeah. Even, they would probably wouldn't even known Sandusky. Yeah, it, it's 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 has raised it even that, that tells you the level of concern with people when there's actually talk about this um, canceling the seat. And Joey's right for the players' sake. Um, Penn State's already paid a price, and they're going to continue to pay a price. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not – canceling the season is not going to change anything. Right. And, I, and like, if it's a symbolic gesture, I don't see the point in it. It's mm -hmm. Because you've got current players now. These kids have worked their butts off trying to play football for Penn State. They deserve the opportunity to play. The people that are going to get punished in this are the people that deserve to be punished in this, and it's already happened. Joe Paterno's done. McQuarrie is probably going to be gone from the program. There's going to be some fallout from this. I don't think you can stretch that out to penalize the current players who had mm -hmm. nothing to do with this situation. Mm -hmm. And they're, and th these guys are going to pay a price. Penn State's program is going to suffer for this, and those players are going to suffer for it too because they're, the program they play in is no longer Penn State, this you know top-of-the-line college football program. It's now 
there's a big black mark on that program and mm -hmm. it's through no fault of their mm -hmm. own. Of course, my question too in, in looking at this and, and anybody in our legal system, and it, and it should be this way, you're innocent until proven guilty, but you gotta wonder, as this evidence stacks up, will Sandusk in the end plead guilty and throw himself on the mercy of the court? It wouldn't surprise me if he did. I, I, I kind of think he will. 67 years old, I mean. I, I think he will, but, but what, I, I don't know. know. He, but can you imagine a trial, a public trial, when he has to sit there and face these accusers, and they're going to be, I mean. In the numbers in the double, if it's 20 a double people figures now. testify and mm -hmm. you're on a jury, this, his attorney will have to knock down the testimony of 20 people? That's mission impossible. Well, and, and starting with an adult, Macquarie. Right. And right. then there's supposedly maybe some janitor, I don't know. There's a janitor is. also who supposedly, yeah. So, and like Joey said, normally we've seen enough of these things, I think we all have, that you start talking, well, tip of the iceberg, and you know, and, and you know, you're afraid to see how big the iceberg might be with the implications and how far it goes, you know, and, and I think the implication of college, you know, we're, we're, we're all involved in sports and Joey and I particularly one way or another, you're, you're very involved, you, you've seen it and you know, you have a uh, your thing with the Yankees. You know, they you know that's what you do. And then in the Penn State, and you we've seen the godlike presence that yeah. some coaches get. And I think this speaks to that. And that what can happen if there was ever if it, let's just say a lot of people knew at Penn State, and it was you know for whatever reason, hey, it's too big to fail. Oh, yeah. We can't. That uh, just you know, makes it it, so much worse. So much worse. So I I think that uh, you know the lesson of uh, you know adulation. Hey, it's sports and you know, I, I've been involved in it. I, you know, I get, I make my living, but I've also seen a lot of things where, you know, it, it's a, bad things happen. I mean, I I grew up playing and went to college and all that, but I, I as you look but back, I, sometimes I, you I, see I think what makes this scandal so much worse is all these other scandals are involved recruiting violations. Uh, we we've grown just, up, we we yeah. all live in Kentucky. We've all grown up in Western Kentucky. Right. The biggest college sports scandal probably in all of our lifetimes is Kentucky's basketball investigation in the late 80s. Right. Probably because we live here too. Right. right. But that was, you know, this was a program that was nailed to the wall. Right. And this, but the, this but, is but, way beyond but, but anything that, these, we've these, seen. These, those are not criminal. Those, those yeah, are, exactly. that's this NCAA is way be, rules. This is way like, beyond yeah, anything we've dealt like with before. It's like breaking the rules of the club. But this is the most horrific form of, of, of a felony. I mean, uh, uh, sure. abusing Listen. children. This is, this goes, and again, those other you, you, the scandals, you know, all paying players on the table or whatever. Mm. That's one thing, but this is yeah. just, they it, dwarf, it dwarfs all the other. this is not well, a, maybe somebody that got caught one time. Oh, no. This. He's a serial, apparently. He's, may, he's, he's, he's charged with serial. If we believe, no, I think, all, yeah. yeah. This well, is I an think ongoing we're all, thing. You know, I mean, the UK, all the other, all the other scandals we've talked about, and you say, okay, it's wrong. You can say everybody else does it. It was to benefit the school by getting a player to make them better, and so therefore everybody says, well, okay. And we, we almost become accustomed to yeah. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, this is a violation of human, just this. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's humanity. It's, 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 it's humanity. a crime against humanity. And it, it and, it, and it speaks a little to the Michael Vick thing with dog. everybody had a dog. Right. You, never, you, you don't do that. Right. And you don't do this. You don't right. allow this to happen. Right. And if you do, you're almost marked as, you're, how can you allow this to happen? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're right. This is this is, uh, and and like you said, if it had been a program that maybe was uh, has some shaky, uh, had had done something before, you go well. Uh, it, it, to me, it's maybe the story of the. If it's not the story, I don't know the decade at least. Oh, be, it is because you just, yeah. it, it's it's you couldn't have you you would have said no way. There's not exactly. this, this couldn't happen. So it is. It's worth talking exactly. about. And like I agree, with, this is not going away. I, oh no. I, I had some people say, they said, oh, they'll say, uh, um, oh, it, it'll blow over after a while. And I said, mm -hmm. no. It, well, these, are, these, are, these are other, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, scouts were out talking when I was in Arizona. And, yeah. they, and I, said, I said, oh, he'll, uh, I said, no, this, is, this won't. This, this is, is criminal behavior that doesn't involve money. It's not, this is not money changing hands right. or it's perversion. fraud. Or, yeah. this is, it's sexual this perversion. This is as Deed serious as, as it is. Short of murder, yeah, this it is, is about as serious is, as it, it is. is. Yep. It is, it, it is. is, it is, it is. Well, we, we were talking about before the program, Gerald Watkins, who I teach with, takes a class as to 
Edible Penitentiary regularly, and he said up there that that the that the prison and th these were violent offenders in Edible, and this is your mm -hmm. this is your really hardened criminals, and and, and the worst and this state the, has the, absolutely it is, and, and and at the bottom of this, the worst in their view is child molesters. They're worse than murderers, um, and that <laughs> that really tells you something right there. Yeah. Um, <coughs> we had talked earlier. Um, there's been a, a spinoff from this, or the Syracuse University. Very quickly, what's going on with that? Bernie Fine's a longtime assistant coach. He's been Jim Beheim's top assistant for more than 30 years. And Jim Beheim is as iconic a figure at Syracuse as Joe Paterno is at oh, Penn sure, State, maybe sure. not nationwide, right, but right, certainly there. Right. Bernie Fine has been accused now by, apparently a few years ago, a former ball boy accused him of some of the similar activity. It was investigated by the police, the newspaper up there, uh, various outlets, investigators could not find anything. The police couldn't find anything to corroborate it. Now, the first accuser's stepbrother has come forward and made the same accusation, and this is being revived again. And let's be honest, has this been inspired by the Penn State thing? Possibly, we don't know that. But the, the reaction is different. Syracuse has really come out and said, hey, we know this guy. You know, this isn't a guy they made to resign years ago. They said, we've known this guy, we're, we're backing him 100%. They feel like it's unfounded, mm -hmm. and, and, we'll, and only time will tell. But it's different, it, the, there's a different reaction from the, from the university in this case. They are standing firmly behind this. This isn't, you don't get the impression that, you know, it was a swept, sweep it under the rug kind of thing right. that we had at Penn State. As police investigated and there was nothing yeah. in it. Yeah. And Beheim came yeah. out and support yeah. it. Yeah. Doesn't appear it maybe could he, I don't know unless there's something, uh, something new. But it doesn't appear to have legs. But but, but, but Syracuse, Syracuse is has the same stature in that part of the country. Oh, absolutely. New York, so that's the university that Kentucky has in this state. Sure, Syracuse absolutely. is sort of like a state university. Yeah. Up there. it's such a. I've got, I've got a buddy who lives in Syracuse. Yeah. He's an uh, orange man all the way. Uh, I mean yeah. that is a. Yeah. I've yeah. been up there, and you're right. Yeah. I, I came back and I told people and go, and I said, I'm. It's just like UK. I'm telling you. It is. It is. It's like I don't. You know, it is. if that the same thing we said earlier, but if it was true at Penn State. Surely people would know it. You think surely people at Syracuse would have an idea? Oh, this. I think I mean, they would. Syracuse is not New York City. Yeah, and uh -huh. you know this stuff does get around if it's true. We don't know uh -huh. it's true, and there's no way. No, of and, and again, in, in an all fairness to this coach Sandusky, he is innocent until proven guilty, and all we know is what we've seen on television, read mm. in the newspapers, or in news magazines. But the part of this, I, I think, what's really got people going, it's it's not just the horrible nature of these accusations. It's what looks like a massive cover-up that went on for years. And the thing about Joe Paterno is, Joe Paterno is like an army general. He is ultimately responsible for the good or the bad. If you're the top man, mm -hmm. you are, that goes with the territory. You are responsible for it. And I think that's gonna be a big part of the story as this thing unfolds. Well, I mean, you know, when you're the CEO, you're responsible for you anything on your company, ultimately. Good and bad. Okay. And he bed, is, so. I mean, in his rep, I look at this, and I don't want to equate these two cases, O.J. Simpson. People th look at O.J. Simpson, he got away with murder. Well, he got away cr legally, criminally possibly. O.J. Simpson's paid a price. Mm -hmm. It might not be the price we wanted him to pay, mm -hmm. but he's paid a price. Mm -hmm. He's a pariah in this country mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Joe Paterno is paying a substantial price mm -hmm. already for this, mm -hmm. not just in the terms of public opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, his image has been sullied forever, and you know whether he faces criminal charges or who who knows what happens in the future with that. But his reputation has already taken a huge hit, and one he'll never he'll never be able to recover from. And that will have to be the last word. We're out of time. Already. Already. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us. My guest today was Leon Worth of the Milwaukee Brewers and Joy Fosco of the Paducah Sun. I'm Barry Craig. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time.